As many of you know, Archie Griffin of Ohio State, the only player in the history of college football to win two Heisman trophies, did it back in the mid-70s. It's been over 40 years uh, since we've seen somebody win more than one Heisman. Now, Lamar Jackson of Louisville, the 2016 Heisman Trophy winner, if he's to win another Stiff Farm Trophy, his numbers in 2017 at least need to probably reflect what he did last year. It's going to be hard to duplicate, but at least he needs to be in the ballpark. Speaking of numbers, did you know that in 2016, Lamar Jackson accounted for over 5,100 yards of total offense? 5,105 to be more exact. Over 3,500 yards through the air. Over 1,500 yards on the ground. And there must be something magical in Louisville about the number 51 because that's how many touchdowns he accounted for last season. That's right, 21 rushing, 30 touchdowns through the air. Now, is there anything he can improve upon his game? Of course, that is completion percentage. He only completed 56% of his passes in 2016. Now, you might remember Louisville, they started off well. They blew out Florida State. Even though they lost at Clemson, it was only by six points. And Louisville, despite the defeat, won a lot of respect nationally. Got all the way to 9-1. and one. And, of course, things went bad after that. Getting blown out at Houston on national TV. Inexplicably losing to Kentucky. And then losing to LSU in the bowl game to close the season out, despite with nine wins, closing it on a three-game losing streak. So we'll see if Lamar Jackson and company can do just as well, if not better. Receiving-wise, they've got some work to do because Jackson loses his top three targets. But the receivers they have coming up have an opportunity to keep the Louisville offense going. We're talking about Jalen Smith, whom last season um, had six touchdown receptions. We'll see how that goes. Des Fitzpatrick, one of the more highly talented recruits from the 2016 class, redshirted last year, a move that could really pay dividends for Bobby Petrino's team. Des Fitzpatrick had one hell of a spring game. And then Reggie Bonifan is back, the one-time quarterback who has made the transition to receiver smooth. Now, offensive line, that's where a lot of people are going to be watching Louisville because last year, despite the Heisman Trophy winning year for Jackson, a lot of times he was running for his life. 47 sacks is what Louisville allowed a year ago. Third highest amongst FBS teams. And they also gave up 83 plays of lost yardage. So, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that that area must improve. You do return, um, you know, Jerron Christian at left tackle. At right tackle, you have Lucas McNeil. But unless these guys have gotten better, and unless the um, coaching change to have um, Mike Summers as a co-offensive coordinator and full-time offensive line coach can pay off, then... Lamar Jackson is going to be very, very sore throughout the season because of all the hits he takes, and you have to replace the guards and the center. The running game, of course, it's pretty much Lamar Jackson, but the uh, running back that they have that hopes to alleviate some of the pressure of Jackson is uh, Jeremy Smith. Offensive line, though, has to be more physical, and the pass protection has got to be better. Now, you're looking at the defense for Louisville. You're talking about a squad over the last three years that has kicked ass. Top 20 in the country the three years that Todd Grantham was the defensive coordinator. But a rarity in college football, in fact, a rarity in any sport has just occurred. That is, you have coaches switching schools for the same position. Peter Sermon was only a defensive coordinator at Mississippi State for one year. But now he takes over for Louisville. Todd Grantham, you got it, is going to Mississippi State. Again, that's kind of weird, but that's how it all played out. So what's the biggest concern that Sermon's going to have? I think it's going to be defensive line uh, because that's the area where they're going to be the least experienced. But you do return the defensive tackle, and uh, you return in, in Drew Bailey, who had uh, three sacks um, a year ago. Linebackers, a little bit better shape in that department. In fact, the leading returning tackler, Stacey Thomas, um, who had 85 stops a year ago. You have him back at linebacker, and also to James Hearns, eight sacks a year ago. Not bad. So, let's talk about the secondary. Uh, one key loss, Josh Harvey Clemens, now in the NFL. But the rest returns, including the best of the bunch, and that is Jair Alexander. Uh, five interceptions a year ago. Terrific close down speed and return to punt for a touchdown a year ago. Averaged about 11 yards per punt return. Tremaine Washington will complement Alexander on the other corner. And you have Chucky Williams at safety. He's back for UofL. 
Talking about the special teams for the Cardinals, no problem in this area. Kicker is back. That's Blanton Cricky. 16 of 19 field goals a year ago. That's good. And 44 yards per punt is what Mason King averaged. So with King and with Cricky, special teams should be fine. The schedule for Louisville, okay, amongst the top 20 that will be included in my college football previews for these next few weeks, okay, Louisville probably has the most manageable non-conference schedule. I mean, you got to play Purdue for the opener at Indy. Shouldn't be a problem. Kent State at Murray State at home. You kidding me? The game at Kentucky will be an attention getter because of what the Wildcats did last year at Papa John Stadium. So I think Louisville, to close out the season in Lexington this time, should be a little bit more prepared mentally to uh, take care of Kentucky. They weren't last year. And then looking at the ACC, the opener, second game of the year at North Carolina, that's tricky placement in my opinion because the next week you play at home against Clemson. So if Louisville's not careful, North Carolina, the Tar Heels could sneak up on the U of L. And then, of course, circle the date in October. We're talking about um, October the 21st at Dolph Campbell Stadium. I know Florida State has circled it for a while, for months now. All you have to say to Florida State is one thing. 63 to 20. That's the score that Louisville posted against Florida State a year ago. A 43 point beatdown against Jimbo Fisher's squad. The game this year in Tallahassee. Florida State's going to be one of the highest ranked teams in the country. The Vegas win total for Louisville 9.5. Vegas knows that this schedule for Louisville should present at least nine wins. And I tell you, I have gone back and forth on this. I'm going to say under, but by the skin of their teeth, I say Louisville wins nine games. On one hand, Lamar Jackson will have another breathtaking year. Wouldn't surprise me if he won another Heisman Trophy. Plus, I like the secondary of the Cardinals. But the offensive-defensive lines make me cringe a little bit. The receivers, they have potential, but in a lot of sense, they're still... A little raw, not as experienced as the receiving core that Lamar Jackson had to work with last season. So I say Louisville will finish third in the ACC Atlantic Division, win nine games just like they did last year, and maybe a tenth win in the bowl game. But remember, the Vegas projection only has what they'll do in the regular season. So in terms of the broad picture, I've got Louisville finishing just under that 9.5 projection. That's my look at the Cardinals. Catch you next time.